For more on this, I'm joined live by Natasha Beater, Education Editor at The Australian. Thanks so much for joining us, Natasha. So there's been this steady, longer-term decline in education standards in, in Australia, but what makes this year's NAPLAN results all the more shocking? Look, this year the teachers, uh, sorry, the, the ministers set a higher pass mark uh, for NAPLAN and so we're seeing a much larger group of children failing to reach the minimum standards. Um, the good news, I suppose, is that we've identified these children. We know who they are by name. So there is no excuse not to help them. I, I see education as an escalator. It's an escalator to... Um, a life of prosperity. It's, it's an escalator to opportunity, to a job, to going to, to do a trade or go to uni. And the trouble is we've got all these kids falling off the escalator, ending up at the bottom or at the sides, and they're not proceeding and um, catching up with their classmates. If, if you are struggling in year three, um, you're very highly unlikely to catch up by year nine, and that's just not acceptable. Uh, there are lots of reforms in train. There's something like a dozen ongoing reviews, but it's too slow. I think that, um, seriously, education ministers all need to be locked in a room when they meet in October until they come out with some uh, much faster uh, agreed strategies to help these children. It can't wait another year or two until another funding agreement is negotiated. Yeah, well, uh, the Albanese government says catch-up classes for struggling students will be prioritised, which is a more immediate thing that they're going to be looking at. But Jason Clare, the Education Minister, says that more serious reform is needed. What are we talking about with that serious reform? Has Gonski failed? Uh, is this a private school versus public school issue here? The governments are still talking about the need to tie funding to disadvantage. The issue is that for whatever reason, and it's not clear because there's so little transparency, all this money that has been pumped into the system has not actually helped those children who are really struggling. So what happens at the moment is the federal government hands over vast amounts of money to schooling authorities, that so might be the Catholic schooling authority or to states and territories, and those states and territories then allocate it the way, any way they'd like. Now, I think what the federal government will be doing from now on is, is tying strings to this money and saying this money must be used for uh, professional development for teachers or this must be used for tutoring and, and working out um, what is the most effective way to spend it because at the moment um, it's just outrageous that there's so much money going in and it's not not reaching those children. The other issue we have in Australia, we have quite a, an interesting education system here, which is probably only mirrored by um, uh, England, that we've got a segregated system of education where we have the private schools, which are getting more a bigger and bigger share of students, and the, the parents who've got the money to send their kids to those schools, and often they might not have the money, they might go into debt to send their children to those schools because they so value a really good education. And the issue is that the public schools, which I would argue, are, uh, I, I am a product of a public schooling education, and I just don't think we can continue to um, erode it. I think we need to have... Um, we need to celebrate the teachers in the public schools so that they're not drawn into the private schools. Uh, we need to help children aspire. We need to have a better mix of children in the public schools so you've got high achievers mixing with the lower achievers and helping each other. Uh, we are just getting... Uh, uh, the segregation is growing year by year and I think that is causing this problem of children left behind in these educational ghettos. Now, this catch-up tutoring is a great idea, but I don't know where we'll find the teachers. We don't have enough teachers as it is. That is why uh, students in remote areas are less likely to succeed because often they don't have t um, teachers who are perhaps specialised or qualified to teach high-end maths, for example. Um, so perhaps we need to lure some of the retired teachers out of retirement to come back and help and pitch in um, to get these kids back up to speed because if we don't give them a hand up, uh, our society is, is really going to suffer. Well, thanks for your reporting on this. Natasha Beter, the Education Editor at The Australian, no doubt. Plenty more developments to come. Thanks again. Thank you.